One of the big changes to the internet that you are going to live through is the widespread deployment of the successor to IP version 4. That's known as IP version 6. IP version 6 addresses many problems with IP version 4, but probably the biggest problem that IP version 6 addresses is by adding more addresses. That's the big issue with IPv4. Not only does IPv4 only have, you know, 4.4 billion addresses, but those addresses are not very well allocated. Um, and so the IPv6 address space is significantly bigger. So IPv4 addresses are 32 bits. Um, with IPv6, we're going to 128 bits. And this is just this obscenely long number. Let me actually show you that number. Um, here we go. The number of possible IPv6 addresses. <laughs> uh, zoom in here. Uh, there it is, right? So by going to 128 bits, we now have this many possible IP addresses. This is a huge number. Um, now, by expanding the IP address space to 128 bits, IPv6 doesn't really, isn't really saying we need this many addresses, but it turns out that by making the addresses this big, it actually also really simplifies the process of routing and address allocation. So for example, uh, because the addresses are so huge, I can give you know 128 bits. So let's say I divide that in half. That's 64. Right? So 64 times 2. So I can give, for example, one network operator, an autonomous system, a 2 to the 64th uh, addresses to allocate themselves. And I still have this huge number of those that I can give out. And so I can give out these huge chunks of IP addresses to individual autonomous systems, and they only need one routing prefix to be reachable by the rest of the internet. So it turns out that by over allocating IP addresses, by creating so many, this ridiculous number of IP addresses that we would never actually use, this might be like more than the number of atoms in the universe or something, it's hard to tell. Um, but by creating so many, it actually makes the process of allocating them simpler. It also makes, this the, pro makes the process of routing simpler. So for example, University of Buffalo and other universities, over time, because they've needed more IP addresses, they've had to acquire other prefixes. So we started out with 128.205, but now it turns out that we've um, acquired other prefixes. And so now when we need to advertise routes to UB, we have to advertise all these different prefixes because we needed them to acquire more IP addresses. Um, with IPv6, that problem is gone. So um, how does IPv6 compare with IPv4? So here's the IPv6 header. Um, now, you know, it, it, it's similar to, to IPv4. There's a lot of things that are, that are pretty much the same, but the big difference is that both the source and the destination address in the IP header are much, much larger. They're four times larger. Um, and so IPv6 is fundamentally incompatible with IPv4 uh, because the packet headers are so different, right? In IPv4, I need four bytes for each address. In IPv6, I need 18 bytes and so I need a lot more space in the packet header for these addresses. Other than that, because of the encapsulation, uh, because of the way that encapsulation works on the internet, it should be possible to run existing protocols like TCP and high level protocols directly over IPv6 without any problems, right? Because IPv6 is wrapping the content that's being provided by the higher layers and just making sure that it gets to the right place. It's performing the traditional function of the IP layer, it's just using addresses that are much bigger. Now, IPv6 was proposed a long time ago, and it's sort of, at least for me, sort of become a running joke. Like, is IPv6 ever gonna happen in our lifetime? And so it was actually really exciting to see something recently. Now, why is it taking so long to deploy IPv6? Well, it's because, you know, you have to change everything on the internet. All the routers that speak IPv4 have to be reconfigured to speak IPv6. The routing tables have to be updated. The packet formats are different. And so there's a lot of things on the internet that have to change. But let me show you something I saw saw uh, recently that I thought was super exciting. This is the first time that I've ever looked up my public IP address at the University of Buffalo and got a 
IPv6 address back. So you're used to seeing these dotted decimal things, 128.205 or whatever. This is my public UBIP address. I'm on the UB Secure Network, and it is an IPv6 address. And welcome to the future. I mean, this we're gonna have to get used to seeing these things. This is huge. I mean, this is kind of a mess, right? I mean, with 128.205. whatever, it's like, okay, I see the prefix, I get it, right? What is this thing? It's like, it's practically the width of my screen, right? But this is the future. This is how we're gonna address things in the future, I think 10, 20 years down the line, we've seen, we've seen a lot of migration to IPv6 in certain parts of the world. Uh, mobile carriers are moving in that direction, and it's, so I think it's, this is going to be much, much more common. Your phone might already have an IPv6 address. My computer right here has an IPv6 address, so this is coming. It's coming. Uh, we're going to get there. Um, it's been a long road, but we are going to solve the IPv4 exhaustion problem by replacing it with this upgraded version to IPv6. Much larger addresses, more uh, addresses to allocate, makes address allocation easier. It also makes routing quite a bit easier. Welcome to the future. Number of IPv4, IPv6 addresses. Here we go. Ready? 340 undecillion, 282 decillion, 366 is non-alien, 920 octillion, 938 septillion, 463 sextillion, 463 quintillion, 370 quadrillion, 607 trillion, 431 billion, 678 million, 211,000, and 456. Don't forget the 456.